In this After Effects video, we're going to create simple animated infographics. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Creating animated infographics involves numbers and of course motion graphics. So in this video, we're gonna focus on working with data and working with motion graphics on how we can showcase information. And this can be great for obviously more corporate type motion graphics and also for sci-fi pieces when you're compositing say sci-fi displays. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and let's get started. All right, here we are inside of After Effects and we're going to move over to our new composition where we already have our background in here, but we're going to start the infographic from scratch. Let's start off by bringing in a piece of data. So we'll grab the textile tool here at the top and all we're going to do is type in zero. All right, and then we come over here, come here to the character window and we can just make this a little bit bigger if we want. And then we come to the line tab and we can center this up. If you don't see the align tab, just go to window align and this number is right in the middle of our composition we're using the typeface gotham you can use whatever that works for you all right now that we have this number in here the first thing i want to do is actually go right to a shape because i want to animate the number with the shape as well so we're going to grab say the ellipse tool we'll click on the word fill set it to none click ok click on the word stroke and we'll set it to solid color click ok and here's the stroke width we can make it a little bit bigger maybe we'll go to 20 we'll see in a second but from here we'll click and hold down shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect circle like this and then make sure we center this in the center of our composition with the align tab just using the center align tools there and we can make this a little bit thicker if we want okay so from here we're gonna go to our shape layer one which is right here so we're gonna come right here to our shape layer one and we're gonna come here to add and we're gonna add a trim paths okay so the trim paths here, we're going to decrease the end percentage all the way to 0%. So now we just have this zero in here. Now I want to animate this shape with our number. So what we're going to do here is go to layer new null object and we'll go to effect expression controls and we're going to grab slider control. And from here, we're going to go into say our text layer, open up the tab there, go into text and we're going to alt click the stopwatch for source text. All right, and then you might need to go back to your null object where you, see, where you see slider control. Grab the pick whip right here underneath your text and parent it to the slider just like that. Now we'll come here into the slider here. We can add a keyframe for slider. We can move forward to say four seconds. That'll be like the duration of our animation. And we can set this number up. And now we'll have this number animating. And now you get this crazy you know, decimal system going on here. And we don't want that. So we'll go into this expression right here, go right to the beginning of it. And this part is very important. Come here to the beginning of it. So right in front of this, we're going to type in capital M math dot round and open parenthesis and go to the end here and close parenthesis. So it's math dot round open parenthesis that you have to type and then you have to put an end parenthesis at the end and you have to make sure the M is capitalized because you know code reasons and then click off it and boom, it's a whole number. And now we have this number counting up like this. So remember that shape layer that we just created with the trim paths? Well, so now we can just animate this with our null object. So what we'll do here, same thing, come here to say the end percent under your trim paths that we created a moment ago. And we're gonna go back to our null object and we're gonna grab the pick whip, parent it to the slider. And now, oh, uh, look at that. And now we can animate our numbers and any shape along with that you know value so that's really cool so we can now we can marry motion graphics with you know data so this is a very simple infographic but i want to come in here and build this out a little bit better than what it is we'll come here to edit duplicate and this will duplicate our circle right here and then we'll come in here and come to the contents let's go to the ellipse one go into the transform ellipse one and we can scale this up and it'll scale right from the center and we can bring down the stroke here make this a little bit smaller and now we kind of have just two of these, which is fine. And what I like to do here is duplicate this one more time. And then I'm gonna come here to the circle data too. And I'm going to just delete the trim paths. And then I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard for opacity. And I'm gonna lower the opacity of the second layer here. So now we'll have another data stream coming on here over an overlined layer. So there's a lot of ways that you can design these sort of things. So I just went ahead and scale it down a little bit there. And you know, what I'll do here is I will take our full circle here and I'll bring it to the top and we can scale this outward and we can maybe match this up to the outline of our main circle there and we can match the scale up to the main outline of our big circle here and we can you know 
bring the opacity back up if you hit T on keyboard. And then we can duplicate it again, hit S on keyboard for scale, and bring it down to match the interior of our big circle that's animating. And now we have this hollowed design of our meter animating here. And let's take this even further. So let's continue to duplicate these. So we can duplicate the circle again, hit S and keyboard for scale. We can bring this out and we can do a little bit more of a detailed design here. So maybe we'll, this time we'll go into the contents. We'll come here to the ellipse one, we'll come here to the stroke one. And where it says dashes down here, we can click on this plus icon and it'll turn it into dashes. And from here, we can click the add button and it'll add a gap parameter here. We can increase the gap if we want. I'm going to decrease the dash to about two. We can decrease the gap here or increase it depending on how many lines you want here. We can increase the stroke width to make it a little bit longer. And now we kind of have like this targeting system or whatever it is. And we can bring this down just to match it up. Put that right there. And then we can grab one of our outline circles again, duplicate it, bring it to the top. We can scale this up and boom. Look at that. Now we kind of have like a full infographic in here. Uh, this nice little infographic design that we did in a couple of seconds and then we can do like some triangles design in here as well So maybe this time we'll grab say the polygon tool and We can just draw out a perfect polygon like this doesn't have to be in the center or anything And then come here to the polystar one here come here to the polystar path and where it says points set it down to three from here We'll go to transform polystar one and we'll come here to rotation and we'll set it to 90 degrees and we can bring in the X position to match up our circle there. We can maybe make it a little smaller if we want to. Boom. Then we can hit R on our keyboard for rotation. We can all click the stopwatch and type in wiggle. Open parenthesis, one com, maybe one 200 close parenthesis. And then we can duplicate this, hit R on our keyboard for rotation. We can offset the rotation, duplicate it again, and maybe offset the rotation over here. So now we have a little bit of random animated properties here. And this will be a nice way to bring attention to the entire graphic. When it comes to specific animations, I have certain formulas. So like for circles, I like to do a very basic scale animation with these things. So, so what I would do is grab all of our shape layer circle data here, just hit S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for all this. And I would bring these keyframes forward in time and then set the scale down to 0%. And then you get a very basic scale animation like this. And then of course you can come into the specific, you know, shape layers here and just variate it in time. So you get a little bit of offset and nothing comes in at the same exact moment. But what I like doing when it comes to animation, especially when it becomes repetitive, is I like to use a plugin called Animation Composer, and I'll link this in the video description. And what Animation Composer allows me to do is go into the variety of layer transformation presets that I have. I can say, go say maybe rotate and scale, and I can preview the animation before I apply it. And then I can grab, say, all my layers here that I want to animate, and I can apply the preset as in, and I'll automatically add it here. And now we got this entire animation like this. And what's cool about this, I come here to more tools, come here to say transition shifter, and I'll bring this up. And what I could do here is come here to the bottom where it says one frame. I guess let's say the, you know, three frames or something, four frames and click on do, and it will offset everything here for me. And we can animate my entire object just like this. And if we want, we don't want this ascending. We set it to descending and click on do. Here's what we have if you do descending. So, you know, this allows you to quickly animate groups of objects and you have over a thousand presets in this pack. I'm not going to go through all of them, but go ahead and check your links in the video description if you want to animate your project very quickly. And when we're done here, we can grab all of our layers, pre-compose it, go to layer, pre-compose, click OK. Go to effect, stylize, glow. You got to have the glow. And you, know, you can just go with that one and make sure motion blur is turned on for everything and you should be good to go. And after a quick render, here's what we have. And it looks really cool. So we have our animated infographic with our motion graphics animating to it. So this is just one of many ways that you can create animated infographics. There's so many options out there. And this is just a very you know simple overview to this sort of thing and how to create a really cool design. So it's really up to you how you want to animate this stuff and the type of data you want to produce. You just don't have to use circles. So that wraps up our tutorial on creating animated infographics. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every week right here and of course hit me up on my social media networks those links are in the video description and always be creating